So major retailers slumping big time after same store sales disappointed the street. Target, Kohl's, TJ Maxx among those stocks getting hammered today. So with Black Friday just around the corner, does this signal a lousy holiday season ahead? Let's ask former Walmart CEO Bill Simon. If you don't know Bill, nobody does. What's happening to these retailers? Hey, first, uh, how y'all doing? Happy Thanksgiving. Let's Happy have some turkey and some Black Friday. It's time to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think the I think the sales reports were actually quite good today. I mean, Target had their best same store sales in a long time. Now, you know, there's a little schizophrenia going on in the marketplace because they delivered a, a strong sales growth with investment in e-commerce and had and had some operating profit impact. But, you know, Amazon does that and they get rewarded. And I think the market just needs time to flush itself out. I think they're doing a good job at Target and they eventually, the, you know, they'll, they'll, the, the stock will bounce back. But I expect a very, very good Black Friday. Bill, a uh, quick question. Do you think now the whole where we're using retail as too broad an umbrella? It seems to me you have so many different niches. It's like saying tech is Amazon and Facebook when they're just two entirely different companies. You know, that brings me to the Kohl's and TJ Maxx. They just seem so different right now. Do we need to be more uh, uh, um, um, segregated, if you will, when we talk about retail? Yeah, probably so. You know, they operate in different segments at different markets at different times. And then, you know, there's some other things that are going on at play. If you, if you take the growth that's coming out of Amazon, Walmart's putting up strong top line numbers. Target's putting up strong top line numbers. Those three big retailers, boy, they suck up a lot of oxygen. So there's not a lot of room. You can still have a robust consumer. And with those three guys growing, there's not a lot of room for other people to grow, too. So you got to look at it and, and, and sort of pull mm. it apart to understand what's going on. Hey, Bill, it's Trish Regan. It is very good to see you, sir. Let me ask you, I mean, in this uh, sort of Trump economy, if you would, um, we've gotten sort of indications out there that the consumer, your average American consumer, is feeling more confident, is feeling a little bit better. Does that continue? I mean, you look back to you know, maybe this time last year where people were getting bonuses, et cetera, uh, in part because of the tax plan. Is, is that momentum going to continue or, or are you worried um, about the coming start to the year? Hey, Trish, I think it continues. I, you know, I think the consumer is really buoyant right now. The, the, the tax changes gave them a sort of a jump start. Um, incomes are going up. I heard you guys talking about that in their last segment. I think the consumer stays strong. There's a caveat to that. I mean, the crazy stuff that happens, um, you know, in the political world and the geopolitical implications of them can sometimes change things. I don't believe that the ups and downs in the market impact the, the, the consumer uh, very, very directly. I think they sort of look at that and go, you know, easy come, easy go, let's press on. But I expect the consumer to remain buoyant, absent some big shock to the system. Mm, that's good. So, hi, Bill. Steve Moore here. Um, Bernie Sanders doesn't like uh, Walmart too much. <laughs> and you've seen this new bill that he has to rein in uh, Walmart. To Stop Walmart. <laughs> Stop Walmart. That's better. So what, what do you make of that? How serious is this? Is this holding back the, uh, the, the stock value of... And by the way, you, I think Walmart just recently raised their minimum wage. I'm not so sure what he's so angry about. I, I think, you know, this is Bernie trying to get press and seemed to, he feels like it worked for him with Amazon, though I'm not sure it directly impacted Jeff's decision either. Uh, I think it's getting Bernie some headlines. Walmart's not paying much attention to it. They're running their business. They're doing a good job. They've stated their plan and they're executing their plan and Bernie's just grabbing headlines. So you're not, worried, you. you're not too worried that this is, this is going to become a movement where the retailers have to raise their minimum wage to, say, $15 an hour? And that would put a huge dent, wouldn't it, on the, on the profitability of these companies? I, I, don't think it, I don't think it's a movement. I think the, the, the bigger implications are from retail, from a wage perspective, is they've got to compete in a marketplace where mm -hmm. wages are going up. And so you're seeing companies move their minimum wage up, not in response to political pressure, but in response to market pressure. And that's actually a really good thing. I, I used to tell people all the time, I'd love to pay $15 an hour if that's what it took to, to fill my stores. Mm -hmm. That would mean that we had a buoyant economy and a 4% mm -hmm. GDP growth. And guess what? We do. So <laughs> we ought to be happy about it. Well, Bill, I'm going to continue on Steve's line of questioning because recently Amazon, of course, announced that their second headquarters will be split between North Virginia and also here in New York and Long Island City. Now, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, you know, recently he says, well, he was questioned why he had open arms for Amazon, but then he criticized Walmart, Walmart for being anti-union, job killer, and paying unfair wages. 
Yeah, imagine that, huh? Um, yeah. You know, do you, Walmart and New York have had a, you know, a, a sort of a, a challenging relationship for a long time. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's it is surprising to me that that uh, you know they did fall for the the Amazon, you know. Uh, headquarter two scam that everybody else seemed to fall for and scam you know whoa, whoa, whoa. that was probably about <laughs> the most predictable <laughs> the most predictable outcome that you could have imagined you know we're going to launch a second headquarters and have a beauty contest and really comes down to who's going to pay us the most money and guess what we ended up in the two most likely places anyway so you know bill do, yeah. is, is are these people these these people that are running the cities by just raising taxes and raising regulations except when it comes to individual companies like amazon are they ever going to get it to because they keep getting voted in i'm a, I, I can't stand my mayor de blasio i think he's doing just the wrong things mm -hmm. in this city on the other hand he just got reelected i mean w when are voters going to catch up with the reality that the higher you raise your taxes and the more regulations you have uh, the, the fewer companies you'll have working there. Well, I think what you'll have, you know, if I could answer that question, maybe I'd run for something, but, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I haven't figured that out yet either. But the reality is, and you've sort of seen it, you know, with all the, 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 the regulation that they put, particularly on, on, uh, on job creators in, in Seattle, I mean, yeah. people have abandoned that and they've moved out. And so I think, I think that while the voters who live there might keep voting at companies are also voting with their wallet and they're moving out and, and you know, without real substantial uh, incentives from the city, I doubt that Amazon would have moved there. Yeah, and we got more on that particular yeah. subject coming up. Thank you so much, Bill, for being here. We really appreciate it. Fascinating.